All right, guys, we're here for part two of the fig tour. And I want to start off by saying that a lot of these figs in this section here are quite early. Um, a lot of them I had just up potted this year into 10 gallon size pots, as you can see down here. Um, some of these are not as mature as I would like, but ma majority of them are somewhat mature. Uh, some of these I've had for three years now. And if I've up potted them and put them in this location, it's probably for a good reason. Um, so the majority I'm gonna, or the majority of the varieties I'm gonna mention here, is probably well worth having for someone in um, in my climate. What we're looking at here, this is my Azores Dark, and we've talked a great length about this tree. This is my Vasilika Mavra. And this is one of the royal Greek figs that I made a video on. There's um, Vasilika Aspraseca, Vasilika Melisi, and Vasilika Mavra. But um, Vasilika Mavra needs the wasp, and I believe Melisi does as well. And I'm not really willing to stick around to find out, so we're using it as rootstock, and we've grafted different varieties onto it. Uh, mainly hardy Chicago types to do some sort of trial here. Um, I would like to compare these hardy Chicago types to my Azores Dark and a few other hardy Chicago types that I've grafted onto my white Triana here. And we'll get into more detail on that when they ripen. Uh, let's move on though. This is my Moscatel Preto. Uh, Moscatel Preto took a huge hit in the greenhouse this year. You can see it died all the way back to the stem and two suckers came up and uh, thankfully, it's back in full force. Um, it's really growing strong. It actually put out a couple figs for me, but uh, to be honest with you, my tree was super mature. I mean, it was like one of the largest trees I have, and the thing died all the way down to uh, the base here. So, really disappointing. I think a lot of it had to do with the frost last year that we got in uh, early late November, which was a really hard freeze for such an early part of the season. Uh, this here is my Suwadi, and I've talked at pretty good length about this tree as well. It's it's ripening, but um, it's having trouble this year. It's, it's already ripened about five figs, and it's kind of having trouble uh, keeping the figs on. I think my organza bags are knocking some of these figs off and they're not getting ripe. Uh, they need to ripen for about two weeks, I've noticed. And if they don't ripen for two weeks, uh, if the stem, the neck of the fig, I should say, if the neck doesn't turn fully black, it's not ready. And as a result, uh, I've been eating pretty tasty figs. They have like a nutty flavor to them, but they're not ripe. Um, so really looking forward to one that's super ripe like I got last year. Uh, I actually got a, quite a few last year that were super ripe and they even somewhat dried on the tree like my Azores Dark did this year. This is my Hated de Argentile. You can see it's got a couple figs on it and it was really slow to get going this year. I think a lot of it had to do with the, the pot here. So when you up pot things into larger containers guys, especially earlier in the season, they don't have nearly as much access to heat so you know in this five gallon pot all the heat's hitting the sides all of the roots it's being it's being much warm much warmer but if i up pot this into a 10 gallon the five gallon mass of roots here is not getting hit by all of the the heat uh it's actually much cooler and as a result they don't really grow all that well in the beginning of the season um, but you know what? It's okay because this is more of a building year for me. I'm really seeing this as a year to get a lot of my trees in larger pots because um, so many of them took a hit in the greenhouse. And uh, you know, I, I graft so many new varieties every year that it's not a huge deal to me. You know, I think for the most part, just by me doing this, I should have way more fruit than I have been getting. And a lot of it has to do with just the fact that I keep, you know, knocking these trees back and 
grafting new varieties onto them and, and um, you know, trying to find better varieties rather than just ripening certain varieties that really are just inferior. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the story on that, I guess, guys. Uh, this here is my Mary Lane Seedless, and the Mary Lane Seedless, since I got it, was insanely productive. I mean, it's one of my most productive trees, and this year it has very little on it. You know, there's probably uh, about 10 figs on it. So, not horrible, I guess, but, you know, I'm used to seeing on this tree, even even just last year, you know, a year ago, this was one of my largest trees, and it had like 30, 40 figs on it, and it was in a five-gallon pot, so that's pretty good. Um, you can get upwards of 75 figs in a five-gallon pot. You have to be really on the fertilizer throughout the entirety of the year. Uh, it's too much for me to do something like that. But it's much more manageable with fewer pots and larger pots. This is my uh, LSU Champagne. It is just one of the biggest winners I have. Year after year after year. I mean, I could say the same thing about Mary Lane Seedless, you know. Um, but LSU Champagne is just enormously productive, guys. It really is. I mean, it has everything that you would want in a fig here. Uh, it doesn't have the greatest size to it, but every branch looks like this. Every single branch. Even the ones in the back here that I can't really reach. Um, but there's, I don't know, probably 40 or so figs on this tree. So, and you know what? They're all going to ripen in time. Uh, they're all going to be early. You know, they're gonna, these are going to ripen for me in August rather than September. Like most of these fig trees probably will ripen and you know, this one will ripen probably in September. So, it's a nice bonus to have this many figs this early in the season. Um, it's really a huge plus. The other great thing about LSU Champagne is that it doesn't take very long for it to ripen. So, as soon as it starts to swell, Suwadi as an example that I talked about, this one takes two weeks for it to be ripe. Whereas LSU Champagne, when it starts to swell, four days later, it's perfect. So there's much less that can happen in four days versus two weeks. Here is a Rasty Persian Unknown, and Rasty Persian Unknown is a new honey fig that uh, a friend of mine found. And thank you, Steve, for giving me cuttings last summer. I grafted it last summer onto a Celeste rootstock. And uh, it's been growing ever since. And uh, I up-potted it this year. It hasn't really grown all that much, but, you know, it's still July. We have plenty of time for this thing to put out lots of growth. The nice thing is that there's a fig on it. You know, that's what I'm most concerned with. You know, trialing new varieties. This is, this is supposed to be one of the earliest figs there is, you know. Um, when I'm looking at my figs in this little area here, none of these need a head start. Uh, you know, Azores Dark is my earliest fig. You know, LSU Champagne's a very early variety. Suadi seems very early. Hated de Argentile, it means early, I think, in France, in French. Rasty Persian Unknown, maybe the earliest fig I have. I don't know. Uh, you know, there's RDB, which is super early. We also have De Tres Esplais, which is Pons, Montserrat Pons in Spain. He has a huge collection in Spain that I think the Spanish government helps him out with to try to preserve many fig varieties of Spain. And this is one of his varieties that he has. This is his earliest variety. It's also very tasty. This is an absolute winner in anyone's yard. I mean, it does well in, in Spain. And it does well here in New York. You know, my friend gave me this tree. I saw his tree. I tasted the figs off his tree. It's a winner, guys. It really is. It's so early. It's my friend's earliest variety in New York. This here is, uh, what is this? This is Fico Love. Yeah, this is my love. All of my love. All for you guys. But anyway, Fico Love has a lot of love surrounding it and 
a lot of hype, I should say, is a better word, and all that hype is probably not warranted. Uh, no fig should cost $600 or whatever it cost. Someone bought a tree last year, I think, for $600. Um, it's just not worth that, guys. Um, sure, maybe you can make that back in some time if you're selling varieties, but um, I'm sure this fig tastes good. A lot of people have been ragging on it and saying it doesn't taste good. I have a feeling it's going to be phenomenal, but I don't think it's going to be the tastiest fig I've ever eaten. Uh, but I do think it's going to be one of them figs that we should have here in this climate. So for that, I'm excited for it. This is Colonel Lippmann's and maybe the biggest surprise of any fig that's come out of uh, the fig world recently that could do exceptionally well here. It has a very good hardiness to it. My friend Bill in Lancaster, he grew this fig outside and it did exceptional. In fact, Bill gave me this tree. Uh, actually, I bought it from him and he, he saved one for me at a plant fair and I arrived at the plant fair with my name on it. So, uh, really appreciative towards Bill. And he also has really great trees, guys. So, if you're looking to buy a tree, uh, go to Off the Beaten Path Nursery on Facebook you can contact him there and he sells wonderful varieties. This is my Long Out. Uh, Long Out is an exceptional variety here. Uh, it's taking a while to mature. This was a quite a young tree last year. I got to taste it last year. Uh, this was one of the best figs I've eaten. I did eat it though off of my friend Maddie's tree in New York who gave, also gave me the Traces Place, believe it or not. But I got to eat one of them off Maddie's tree, and it was incredible. Uh, really, one of the better figs I've ever eaten. So I'm looking forward to this because it's very reliable. I'm air layering it for a friend um, because I know how wonderful this variety is. And he's in Canada, and I'm sure he's going to appreciate this. So this is uh, moving on now, I guess. This is Black Beauty 10, and Black Beauty 10... Uh, has also a lot of hype around it and if you want my honest opinion this is a black mission type fig and there's easily 20 20 different black mission types you know for Azores Dark if you can call it a hardy Chicago type which I think it's different from those but very similar um, there's about 60 70 80 different named varieties of the hardy Chicago type figs you know, um, the Black Missions somewhere in, tw in the 20 range. Long D Out, there's probably like 12 or so of them, named varieties. You know, this is my Petit Albique here, and this is a Violette de Bordeaux type. And it's super productive. It really is super productive, guys. Um, there's figs on this tree every year. It's a tissue culture plant, and the Violet de Bordeaux types, there's about 10 of those out there, you know, of named varieties. There's so many names that go by the same fig, it's a little ridiculous, and uh, Black Beauty 10, I think, is no exception. Um, now, I could be wrong with this one. I'm hoping I'm wrong with this one, but the leaf structure is very, very similar to a Black Mission. The photos of the fig that I've seen match almost exactly to a black mission. And the guy who originally found this fig is a bit of a psychopath. So I'm not really um, trusting of this guy whatsoever. So uh, for me, I think I don't believe a word the guy says. But we have, uh, we have it just to trial it and see what's going on. We've got an air layer down here on it. Um, maybe I'll sell this variety to somebody uh, later this season. This here is my Blava, and Blava is another fig out of Ponza's collection in Spain. And I have to say, this one is becoming very productive. It's becoming a fig I think a lot of people may want to trial here. We still have to taste it, you know, um, but it's one of them Pons figs that out of his collection of, you know, many varieties may actually work here you know just because the trace place is early in spain it's it's pons this earliest fig doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the earliest fig here just so happens that it is it's a very early fig here we got lucky 
But if you look at his like 20 earliest varieties, only maybe five of them actually are early here. You know, if we don't have the heat like they do in the early part of the spring to put out figs, um, we're kind of screwed. So certain varieties just don't need as much heat early in the season and Blava is one of them. So that's the story on that. Here we have Brojoto Nero, a very common fig all throughout the world. This may be one of the most common figs. Um, it's very popular commercially uh, all throughout the world. It also goes by many names. You know, there's probably 10 names for this fig. Um, but you can see on this tree, there's different, different leaf patterns going on. Um, you know, this doesn't really match this. You know, um, this is these are quite different from each other. That's because I grafted four different varieties onto it. So I have different types of Brojoto Nero. So we have uh, Brojoto Nero Romano, Masseria, and Lorenzo, a different type of strain of uh, Brojoto Nero, all from Italy. So very excited to try the different strains depending on what town you go in in Italy or depending on what region of Italy you're in you guys will get and find different strains of Brojoto Nero so here's the tree we we just up potted it hopefully you guys can see it it's full size now it's growing quite well this uh, variety here already has put out fruits whereas the other three varieties have not and this variety that's already put out fruits is Brojoto Nero Lorenzo. So, pretty cool. Here's my Olympian. And Olympian is a tissue cultured fig that uh, some guy found in Olympia, Washington. And Olympia, Washington um, probably has some really nice figs around that area. And I have to say that in the description of Olympian, they talk about how it's a unique fig that no one has. They sent it to the USDA collection and got it tested to see if it was unique. And they came back, said it was unique. But the honest truth is that this is an English brown turkey type. This is very common all throughout England. Uh, what you call brown turkey over there in most of Europe, that's what this is. And... Um, the reason for the USDA coming back and saying that they don't have this fig in their collection is because, well, they don't. They don't have an English brown turkey type in their collection. So uh, I guess it's pretty cool that that guy found this and then, you know, made it a huge thing. But the reality is this is a very, very common fig and it shouldn't be labeled as unique. Uh, Olympian produces a pretty good Brava crop. That Brava should ripen pretty soon. We've also grafted, though, something better because Olympian is, is a good tasting fig. I got to try it, uh, I think, two seasons ago. But it's largely very unproductive, so we grafted varieties onto it because the tissue cultured varieties, for whatever reason, some of them, not all of them, you know, my Petit Albeek is quite productive, um, very healthy. You know, that's kind of what these tissue cultured figs do is that they're very healthy but I think they revert back to an immaturity stage like a seedling stage and just take many years to mature before it really puts out much production um, again that wasn't the case with my Petit Albique but it is the case with Olympian and many of people's uh, Olympian trees that I've seen so we grafted two different English brown turkey types onto it. One is Soda Sicilian, which is supposed to taste like a caramelized peach and supposed to be quite different than other English brown turkey types. And then we have Sunbird Unknown, which is actually fruiting for me here uh, on a one-year-old graft, and it's also growing quite well. So I'm excited to try Sunbird. Can't get the sodas to take here. We bud grafted it as a last resort. But, uh, so does, or, uh, Sunbird Unknown is also supposed to taste like a caramelized peach. And I have a feeling, even though the leaf patterns here match Olympian, uh, I have a feeling that this isn't an English brown turkey type or 
it's actually slightly different than your average English brown turkey. So I'm excited to try it. We'll see. We'll get the comparison. Back here is my Dalloso Belfior. And uh, <laughs> Galicio, he, he made a whole bunch of drawings in Italy um, back in the day, hundreds of years ago. He documented a lot of varieties. And um, this was one of them, I guess. Well, Belfior Nursery in Italy claims this is the one that was in Galicio's drawings. And uh, I don't really know for sure, to be honest with you. I don't think anybody really knows. Only Galicio himself would really know. But so far, they're saying that this is the real Dal Oso. And the Dal Oso figs put out a mule type fig. So when you've got, um, you know, when you have figs, you have all kinds of weird different things that can happen. You got the Ramada types, which are the striped figs. You know, you can have variegated leaves, you can have variegated wood, uh, you can have certain varieties, fruit, different colored figs in the same branch, which is really cool. Um, and then you have the mule figs in the case of the Dal Oso here that I have. And uh, it's very interesting how that works, but essentially there's a second part of the fig that forms on the end of a regular, regularly shaped fig. So weird how it works, but it's supposed to be good, um, this variety, and that's why I have it. It's supposed to be early, so I'm also air layering it for that reason, you can see here. Not because of the, the mule habit, which uh, my tree has not done so far, but I did send somebody... A grafted tree of this variety here or of this tree and I sent them that grafted plant and it has put out the double mule figs for them so I don't know that'll be cool I guess the day that happens but not a huge deal if it doesn't back in here this is my planera and planera is putting out a few figs not a whole lot this year again it didn't do all that well some of these didn't do all that well in the greenhouse but it's another one that fruits reliably here from Montserrat Ponds' collection in Pennsylvania. So pretty cool that we found another one. Um, and we did find even one more, which is, um, this is D.N. Manel. And I think this fig here is actually going to be quite productive and fruit reliably here because I, I see a very striking resemblance in the fruit and the leaf to a fig called Gris de Saint Jean, which is a French fig. And just because Pons has it in his collection doesn't mean it's unique, doesn't mean it's unique to Spain. Figs travel all over the world. There's crazy fig people all over the world for centuries. You know, all throughout history, people will take figs with them and bring them to wherever they live. And, um, you know, plant them there. So just because Gris de Saint Jean is a French fig, guys, doesn't mean that you won't find it in Spain. So those are my thoughts on that. We'll confirm that one for sure, but it's getting dark here, guys. We just ended uh, part two, and we'll get part three out to you guys very soon. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. See you later.